Hi, I'm making this fantastic project that looks like a work of art that I can't show you because it's not done yet. So today instead, we are going to look at your Reddit submissions that are guaranteed to be fun. So if you don't have anything better to do, like using my link audible.com slash electroboom to sign up for my sponsor Audible, more at the end, let's look at them. Okay boomers, if you have questions with quality, post it on our subreddit, no matter your entity. I may or may not check it in the next episode of Latity. Okay, my friend and I got into an argument if this video was fake. Yeah, this is a super old video of a guy sticking a knife in a toaster I've seen a while back. <laughs> what do you think? Is it real? Let's stick a knife in a toaster and see. Don't stick a knife in a toaster. This is a scientific experience I will do, not you. Here's a toaster. We turn it on and let's see what happens if we shove a knife into it. <laughs> I'm joking, nothing will happen. What will happen is that very likely you'll short the metal body of the toaster to the filament inside. And if I measure the continuity between the earth of the plug to the exposed metal of the toaster, you see they are shorted. Which means you'll short earth to one of the voltages inside. And if you have a ground fault protection device, it will pop. Actually, let's try that. Here we are, plugged into a GFCI. And if I turn on the toaster and try to short it. <laughs> oh, it popped. Scared me though. Well, toaster filament is just a resistive element like this that heats up with electricity. And if you short any part of it, it won't cause an explosion. Just that it bypasses a part of the filament and the rest of the filament gets super hot and burns. Even if you end up shorting the power lines with no resistance between them, what is the worst thing that can happen? The explosion that I did in the hotel in UK. Oh jeez. Pretty sure those guys blew up their toaster with some sort of explosive for the effects. The worst thing that can happen to you is that if you grab a knife that doesn't have a plastic insulation and you directly touch a power line and there is no fuse or breaker, then you may get a shock. Either way, it's a very stupid thing to shove a knife in the toaster. Don't do it. Just remember this verse. When the circuits are alive, do not touch them with a knife. Happy birthday, Mehdi! Yep, I turned 45. So logically, as I age, my angle should go this way, so at 90 I'll be horizontal. Hmm. If I shock myself enough, I might be able to do a full 360. Fun with flags? Norway, ex Orway, ex Norway, Andway, Nanway, Notway. 1,200 upvotes? <laughs> you people get easily entertained. Electroboom has a unibra challenger, lol. Top 5 Soviet leaders, ranked by their eyebrows. Number 1, Brezhnev. 2, there is no number 2. There is no competing with Brezhnev. I agree, there is no competing with that beauty. Is this real? Got the guys welding by electricity passing through some jars. Salt? Jars? Some clamps? So he's putting some electrodes together to put in the jars. Fills the jars with salt water. Who's this guy at the corner here? He connects the jars to power lines. So he wants to pass electricity through the salt water? Wow, this is one of the most dangerous ways to weld something. This is dangerous. Let's try it anyway. This is a very stupid thing to do, never try this. We have a jar of salt water that we mix with our X-Acto knife. What the salt water does is that it acts like a series resistance to the power line so that if you short the output, it limits the current that can go out. I put two X-Acto knives in the salt water without them touching as my electrodes. I do have one of these old ass welding electrodes that I connect to one of my X-Acto knives. Now we connect the live wire to the other X-Acto knife to current limit. And we also connect the neutral. And we can start welding. Ow! 
This setup is rubbish. Yes, the salt water current limits the supply to a couple of amps, which is still too much for a human body. The output voltage is still at 120 volts, and I guess in the guy's case, it is actually 240 volts. This is a stupid dangerous setup. Welding is typically done at a lower voltage, much higher current, or some other very safe setup. Not this junk. In any case, let's see how we can rate the welding experience. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it arcs a little bit, I guess. What happened? The breaker popped. So the salt water is still current limiting to more than 10 amps. Maybe I put too much salt in it. Okay, I replaced a ton of salt water with fresh water. We still need much more current than this. This is, oh, this is, oh, did I short something? I think I shorted the electrodes. Now it's good. Ooh. So it seems if we short circuit the salt water and get some decent current, we can do some welding, but the breaker pops. And with the salt water, we have a lot of bubbling there. See, look at all the gas. And considering it is salt water, it must be chloride or something. Yeah, which is poisonous. And it's not really welding, like the guy shows, he's just leaving burn marks on his metal. Ah, f it ruined my X-Acto knives. Well, it did weld my alligator clip shot, so I guess it does weld to some extent. Still, a very crappy, dangerous welding system. Don't try that. Just Medi-Photo. Oh my god, it looks like I lost half of my brain there. <laughs> the Electro Boom drawing. <laughs> nice. You captured my evil smile beautifully. Truth has been spoken. The most difficult part of building a free energy device is figuring out where to hide the battery. That's true. Do you remember the magnet motor of the Turkish inventor Muammer Yildiz? The first time I saw his video was back in 2010, 12 years ago. And the video is him taking his magnet motor infinity machine into the University of Delft. And I'm also busy with uh, uh, new energy, zero point energy, free energy. So I'm baffled why a university even entertains the idea of free energy. So that's the motor sitting there, and presumably it only runs on magnets and there is no battery inside. So he always hammers something in the back, and the motor starts going. Yes! And everyone is so excited. Then he takes the motor apart to show inside and that there is no battery in there, only magnets. Well, of course, it's only half open. It definitely looks like there is only magnets in those parts. He takes it to another university to demonstrate. He also has his own documentary about the motor. But it works. There is no, that is no doubt. The <laughs> machine works. No, it doesn't. In 2017, he even took it to the Inventors Expo in Geneva. Well, he's quite persistent. I'll give him that. I wonder where he is now. Did the government happily haput him? What I give Mr. Yield is the award of best hidden battery. I guess this is how Mehdi prepare for maths tests exams. You can electrically shock a person's brain to greatly improve their math skills for up to six months. Light me the f up twice a year. <laughs> Just twice? This is the way. Regular alarm clock, exploding capacitors. You would have to arm your alarm clock every night. Maybe we can make a magazine that auto-reloads the capacitors for the next morning alarm. 200,000 likes on this video and I'll make that. I'm learning as much as I'm taking enjoyment out of Mehdi nearly dying. Electro booms viewers when he doesn't have a near-death experience. <laughs> I guess I'll die. Nah. Remember, I have to do a full 360. And I'm kind of immune by now. I'm joking, you never become immune, so always be careful. Me fixing my outlet using a YouTube tutorial after they remove the dislikes. <laughs> oh, but we have to protect the small YouTubers against mass dislikes. <laughs> Is this really feasible? Yeah, it seems like it's something that floats on magnets and with solar panels on the outside connected to coils inside and the solar panels energize the coils inside that on these magnetic fields make them rotate. Here I connected a solar panel to a bunch of coil and I have a strong neomedium magnet. Neodymium. I place the magnet on an empty box and with a strong light I'll shine on top of the solar panel and it should make the magnet 
wiggle? Nothing? Maybe it needs a stronger light? There you go. It's moving now. Hmm. Very little energy from the solar panels combined with a lot of light and the frictionless floating magnetic setup makes it turn. You ask how the commutation is done? By the light that alternates on different solar panels. Well, thanks for your awesome submissions. So let's move on to my sponsor, Audible. Sign up through my link audible.com slash electroboom or in US text electroboom to 500, 500 and try Audible for free for 30 days. Because for a lot of work or projects, putting them together doesn't take much brain power and it's just hard labor. And you actually want to listen to something to make your time more enjoyable. And that's what audiobooks do. With Audible, you can listen to the biggest archive of titles on top of Audible originals, podcasts, comedy, theatrical performances, and wellness programs, which I could make use of. I don't work out. I just sit in front of the damn computer day and night. I want to work out, but it feels like torture. I would definitely listen to any title that would motivate me to work out. The Little Black Book of Workout Motivation by Michael Matthews. It has some good reviews too. Let's listen to the sample. The reinvention of Jennifer. I set goals all the time, but I just can't make myself do all the things I need to do. Jennifer has to force the sentence out, shaking her head. She's ashamed with more than the words. She's ashamed with herself. Why do you think that is, I ask? I don't know. Maybe I'm just too lazy, or maybe I just don't really care enough. My God, I am Jennifer. I need to hear this. See you guys later. And thanks for watching.